Um, good morning, everyone. My name's James Hunt. For those of you that don't know me, um, I've been part-time and I started at the beginning of 2019, so finally getting my research underway. Um, my project is quantifying the isocenter accuracy of an Electa Unity MR Linac through full gantry rotation. My supervisors are Pejman and Martin, who we all know, and Dr. Hans Ries, who is in Denmark. Um, he works, he's associate professor, associate professor at University of Southern Denmark and a medical physicist at Odens University Hospital. Um, so MR, MR guided radiotherapy or MRGRT is a form, a new form of image guided radiotherapy. Um, it has, as you can see, there are quite a few different types of IGRT. It's very big in the field. Um, it's advantage, the advantages of MRGRT over many of its contenders, um, because it images using magnetic resonance, it has excellent soft tissue contrast and resolution, uh, much better than CT can achieve. Um, also compared to CT, there is no radiation dose from MR, which is obviously is gonna incre increase therapeutic ratio. Um, MRGRT also has the ability to do real-time imaging. As we saw before with MR images, they can give real-time, like a time dimension as well. So we can watch what happens to the tumor during treatment. Um, some of the challenges though with MRGRT, um, we have field distortion from the magnetic field, which is always a part of MR imaging. Um, this, is effect, this affects dose planning to some extent. Um, and the big difference with CT and MR is that CT is absorbed the same way as its, radi as its radiation. It's absorbed in a similar way to the megavolt beam, the treatment beam. Um, MR, is, MR images very differently to radiation because it's based on proton and nuclear density as opposed to electron density. Um, so those are the big challenges. It affects how we can dose plan and dosimetry, but a lot of that is looked at as part of algorithms to translate between the two. Um, so the Electra Unity in particular was released in 2018 it's a 7 MV flattening filter-free linear accelerator coupled with a 1.5 Tesla wide-bore MRI system. A lot of MRI system, a lot of MR Linux before this used a much lower uh, magnetic rest, um, a much lower magnetic field. Um, there's quite a few at 0.35 and 0.85 Tesla, I think. Um, whereas this one's much higher, so it can have a much higher image quality. Um, and it uses, utilizes a slip ring technology, so the LINAC can move a full 360 degrees around the patient and it can just keep going. It's not bound to like, go back again, if that makes sense. Um, here's some of the specifications. Um, I won't expect you to memorize anything. Um, as it's flattening filter free, it has quite a high dose output of above 400 monitor units per minute at the isocenter. Um, it has quite a rectangular radiation field. Uh, um, 574 mil by 220 mil. Um, it has a multi-leaf collimator with 160 leaves. Um, that's about all from the specifications. Um, so here's a bit on how it's designed and installed. This is the Linac gantry, which is installed first in, as three parts. Inside the Linac gantry is the MR assembly installed. There are gaps in the MR assembly to allow the treatment beam to treat. Um, and then there's a bit of shielding uh, RF shielding to shield from the magnetic radiation a bit, um, and the pa patient, patient positioning system is installed last. Um, so the significance of my research in particular, um, I'm looking at the isocenter coincidence between the MV and the MR. Um, obviously this treatment is, we're looking at treating with radiation based on MR imaging, so the isocenter accuracy is incredibly important because that's what all of our positioning is based on. Um, as we know, a planning treatment, uh, planning treatment, planning tumor volume um, includes geometric uncertainty, and this entire area is treated, um, whereas this is where the visual tumor is. So the, the smaller we can get the uncertainty between the MR and the MV images, the smaller the PTV is going to be. This is going to increase the therapeutic ratio, um, and it also will allow us to treat with better proximity to organs at risk. Um, and the big significance for my research is that this investigation hasn't been done for MRGRT before. Um, so my aims are to quantify the uncertainty of the MRMV isocenter coincidence, uh, and that should be a fun, uh, it is a function of gantry angle. Um, as the gantry rotates, it's affected by gravity and mostly gravity, um, and that is gonna cause 
um, bending, um, sag, and tilt, which will all affect the accuracy of the isocenter. Um, the imaging screen as well, um, which is EPID, but it's not technically EPID in the MR, but we all know it as EPID. Um, and the gantry both can exhibit sag, skewness, and tilt. Um, also, amongst my aims, I am hoping if this is successful and my algorithms pr work out well, um, I'm hoping to turn this into a, a simple QA process that could be used for any of these, um, any electric unity, as that would allow, um, it's, it's QA, so obviously we need every machine to be accurate and you can't just test accuracy once you need to, it needs to be an ongoing process. Um, there's no current external alternative to checking this. Um, the, the Unity does have its own alignment tool, but um, it do, it's not as thorough as what I'm hoping to achieve. Um, so the method I'm using involves attaching four ball bearings in a rectangular um, configuration to the gantry head um, and one ball bearing placed at the MRI isocenter. The treatment beam is then fired at every gantry angle. Um, I just wanted to note Unity currently, it does have the capacity to use arc therapy, but it's currently step and shoot. Um, it doesn't have any, it isn't integrated as arc therapy yet. Um, the shadows then of the ball bearings on the imaging screen will be analyzed. So here's an image of the ball bearings attached to the gantry. So you can see the tiny ball bearings there. Um, and we're analyzing the shadows using Hoff Transform, which anyone will recognize from computer vision if you've done it. Um, basically, each point in space on an image is parameterized in terms of like R and theta, different lines that could go through that point. And here we've got three points. Um, so this point gets all these different lines. This point in the middle gets all these different lines. And this point over here is parameterized with all these different lines. The set of parameters that best suits all three points is going to then be like the correct parameter for that line. And that can be used for determining circles as well, the different parameters, and it's very good at circle recognition. Here's one example I've zoomed in on from, um, from some of the images we've obtained already. So I haven't processed the images to increase contrast and whatnot, but you can see the four circles from the gantry and the isocentric circle. Um, I've used MATLAB to already detect the circles. It worked okay on this one. Uh, as you'll see later, I'm having some issues with that. Um, what we hope to do to determine isocenter accuracy is I've just freehanded this, but you draw lines and find the center of, these rec of this rectangle should be there in the center of the treatment beam. And there is misalignment between that. I've just zoomed in, higher technology. Um, misalignment between that and the center of this circle is then going to be the, the inaccuracy between the treatment beam and the MR beam. And quantifying that as a function of gantry angle is my primary goal. Um, so I have my research map here. Um, I started with researching past methods. I was also supplied with initial imaging. We don't have an MRL here in Charlie's yet, um, but um, Hans has access to one in Denmark, which we're using. Um, from the imaging and the past research, I've, developed, I've started developing code. Um, my sort of development, my code development cycle is, initially I'm, I'm localizing the circles, is my current plan. As, that, as I'm trying to get 100% success rate, I'm processing the images and trying to enhance that. Um, manipulating the trigonometry and the angles to do all the different, to find all the different information I want is part of that. And eventually, obviously, I want the, the software to present the data in a neat format so I don't have to mess around with Excel and analyze it myself. From the code development, I want to do, I want to have further imaging done so obviously we can check for repeatability time. Um, I also want to look at time dependence to see if the machine changes over a period of months or weeks. Um, once I've got that, I can integrate various models um, into the treatment planning system of the machine, hopefully, and use that to mo verify whether my model is correct. And then I can have a, a feedback cycle there. Once I've put my model in, I can take further imaging, check those to see whether the model has improved the accuracy. Um, so prior research, um, that I have read so far. Um, there have been multiple sources looking at dose verification with the Unity in particular, but a lot of this is dosimetric rather than geometric. Um, there's one really good source that I've read through which goes through the commissioning process of the Unity, um, which obviously looks at the isocentral accuracy through commissioning. Um, positional accuracy generally is a big topic for me looking at. Um, Pejman has done a lot of work on this before with Martin, um, so looking at various conventional linear accelerators, but not MR Linux yet. Um, and there's a couple sources that do discuss MRMV isocenter verification. 
but a lot of them use big, bulky, expensive phantoms, whereas I'm hoping this method is going to be cheaper and more efficient. Um, and we'll have different options for analysis. Um, here's a quick snapshot of some of the code I've been working on. Um, and here is the app I've created in MATLAB using App Designer. Um, so I can cycle between images. And we've taken both clockwise and anti-clockwise <coughs> images um, to see if there is an effect in the direction we're moving. Uh, as you can see on this image, it's finding all five circles quite nicely. And I think it's the same one. In this image, I am not finding the circles nicely. For, for some reason, it's ignored the circle here and not got those ones. And this one's really big. So these are the kind of issues I'm hoping to sort out because obviously I can't get accurate information with those and I would like it to be 100% automated. Um, so imaging processing should fix that to some extent. Again, here's another one where it's missed, the circle. Um, so here are some preliminary results. I've obtained these in Excel um, by exporting a, a CSV document from MATLAB. Um, you can see a bit of a sinusoidal effect here on the x-coordinate of the upper left shadow, whereas the y-coordinate of the upper left shadow has a, a, has a 90 degrees phase shift, as you would expect, as the two axes are shifted by 90 degrees. Obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty in these so far, and I need to refine that through image processing. Um, here's another result, the y-coordinates of the upper right shadow. Um, so the next steps in my research, I need to look at the image quality to filter out noise, as I've said. Um, hopefully that will improve circle detection. I need to maybe look at other sensitivity methods to improve the circle detection. Um, one thing I haven't done yet, if you look at some of my images, these are all in pixel values from the upper left corner of my images rather than in millimeters, and I need to get my accuracy into millimeters. I have data, I have like the measurements to do that with the, the size of the isometric the size of the field at isocenter, um, but that hasn't been integrated yet. Um, as I said, I want to go from Excel to MATLAB, so it's all automated into one smooth process. Um, and once that's all working, I'm hoping to look at extra criteria such as the skew. Um, so skew is when the board is tilting a bit and we're getting difference. Um, and that's the end of my slideshow, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I was wondering how many images you have um, verifying the accuracy of you know, like 10,000 images or something. I have about, I think it's 200 anti-clockwise and 160 clockwise. So you could. Yeah. How are you planning on verifying the accuracy then, just like searching through all of them manually? Um, like once you've got your algorithm working to detect the circles. I can flick through, I, I'm planning on doing it visually yeah. mostly, I can flick through. Um, I can filter, obviously, to say make sure the circle is in a certain distance because I know I want it to be roughly isocentric. Um, so I've, I've integrated a bit of that somehow. Some of the images aren't getting circles at all. Yeah. I was just thinking a few days that was way larger. You'd have a problem. Yeah, I am hoping to have larger data. Um, yeah. so that's going to be an ongoing thing. Um, so far, I only have one image for each gantry angle in each direction, and I'm hoping to increase that. Yeah. Chance. Um, Yeah. So, particularly with the ISO center, is that actually, is that a factor that an impact in your investigation? Um, I haven't seen it as a major impact yet. Um, I haven't read if it is a larger impact. Um, as far as I'm aware, a lot of the software from the, like a lot of the treatment planning software accounts for that, that I haven't looked at closely yet, but okay. it is something I'm hoping to look at a bit more. I believe it's titanium. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Not steel. not steel, no, because <coughs> that would be a really fun way to build a big gun, but yeah. not too good for treatment verification. And you know, uh, so the images are with the FPID, is that right? Yeah. Uh, is there any, any impact on the FPID doing just at least? Is there any compensation required for the fact that there's a magnetic field? That's something I'm hoping to look at. Um, one of the studies I looked at suggested that um, the, there could be eddy currents produced in some of it that would affect the image as well. Um, yeah, part of that is what I'm hoping to look at. Okay, so I was wondering if there are any um, adjustments made in the image that might actually impact your results, that there may be some calibration they need to do, that varies with time. If there is, I'm, I'm not aware of it yet. Um, it's something I'm hoping to look at. I need to talk more with Hans, who's done all the training. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Any questions from Zoom? Okay, Zoom. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay.